Hi, it's Trisha here at Club Scrap with the beautiful forest floor collection. I have the eight layouts here that we're going to make together just by following our simple uh, plug and play instructions. Um, this is layout one. Here's page two with the beautiful stenciled tag. Page three. Page four with this fun border strip incorporated into the actual print. That little tote is so adorable. Here's page five, another jumbo tag with some stenciling. Page six, this fun um, burlap drawstring bag, muslin bag. Here's page seven with a really cool cut apart collage here on the left. And finally page eight. So if you follow the trimming instructions along with me, you should be able to have everything prepped and ready to go for your pages in less than an hour. And um, then as much time as you need to finish those pages with embellishments and photos at the end. What a great way to make eight pages. I have my instructions printed here along with my 12 inch guillotine trimmer. If you need one of these, we can help you uh, get one. And also I have my accordion pocket file. Um, if you lack space, this is a great way to use your vertical space, stay organized because we will be trimming everything needed for, for all eight layouts at once. And um, that said, if you are a member of Club Scrap, you do have access to the uh, video tutorial in order to make this accordion packet file so that you can stay organized as well. So here's the beautiful uh, kit. I'll set aside the ribbons um, that came with it. Here's the bag. We've got some photo mats. I'll kind of hang on to those. Look at these jumbo tags. I love how big they are. They're going to be really fun. Um, it comes with a beautiful stencil, not the green paper behind it, but just so that you can see what it is. This is so pretty. Um, I think we're going to get a lot of use out of this stencil in, in the future. Um, and then of course we have all the beautiful papers. Let's begin by putting our papers in the order we'll be using them. And uh, for that I usually turn to page two of my instructions and look at the very first sheet of paper we trim, which in this case is a light green plane. So the light green in this collection is the very lightest. This is the medium and there's also a dark green. So just be careful that this is light, medium, dark, and we need one sheet of the light green plane. Then grab from probably the top of your stack, there's a fern print. This is so pretty. Um, and I bet we could probably recreate a lot of this look by using watercolors and this stencil. I'm gonna put that face down on my trimmer base. Then we're gonna dig for a brown plane. It's kind of a lighter brown tone, really beautiful paper. And then a dark green plane, also one of my favorite, really nice evergreen colors. Um, then we'll grab our cut aparts. So I usually like to start with the cut apart that has all the strips. So I'll put that first face down and then followed by the other sheet of cut aparts which has smaller objects and some journaling prompts and so on. And then we will continue to put our paper in order. Next I want the brown, the other brown plane followed by this adorable mushroom print. So it's mostly mushrooms, but there is this cute little toad. I don't know, he's so ugly, he's cute. I, just, I really like him. Um, that's next. And then the other fern print, a dark green plane will be next, followed by the other mushroom print, the remaining light green print, and then two medium green planes. So that's the order from bottom to top. So let's flip that on over. And this is where we're going to be starting with our trimming. Let's file those photo mats for starters. Um, for layouts one and two, I want you to dig and find three ivory plain mats. Those will go in one and two. And then for three and four, we'll put three medium green. So remember, this is light. This is the medium that will go in three and four. And then for layouts five and six, we'll add three light green. And for layout seven and eight, we're gonna go three dark green. We're gonna start things off with one of the easiest cuts of all time. We're gonna turn this into six four by sixes, one of the most efficient ways to trim a 12 by 12. So let's put that light green plane in at six inches. Make sure you stabilize on the clear bar, slice, and then stack up those two pieces. We'll cut them at the same time horizontally at eight and four. Okay, so three of these four by sixes will be filed in pocket one and two. And then the other three will go in uh, pocket seven and eight. 
The next piece we'll trim is this fern print, and it does not really matter which way it's in the trimmer. I think it, it will all be the same from either direction. So I'm just gonna put it in there the direction it was sitting in my pile. And we'll cut at 11 and three quarters. It's gonna make a very tiny piece. Then nine, six, four and a half. I just want to point out it's really really important that as you're trimming you let these papers stack up here without moving them because we will deal with them from the top down and if you move everything in between trimming um, the pieces won't be in the same order that I anticipate and I might lead you astray so just keep them piling up as they land this wide piece that remains in the base of your trimmer when you've trimmed at four and a half that will get filed in pocket one and two and the very next more narrow strip will be filed in also one and two this next piece, we're going to trim it into um, three rectangles of the same size. So we'll cut this at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, and three and three quarters. This will all go in five and six. The very next more narrow strip, we're going to also trim it into three rectangles, 10 and a half, seven, three and a half. Now these three pieces, you'll turn them so the ivory side is facing up. And let me just quick show you something that's kind of cool. Um, the pieces that we just filed into five and six are, this, are just large enough that we can nest them with each other. So these ivory plain side up will also be filed in five and six. This is a little scrap as is this little guy these won't be used but there is a very narrow strip we will use that in layout seven and eight. Now it's time to trim the brown plane. Let's cut this at 11, nine, seven and a quarter, and three and three quarters. Take the three and three quarter, rotate it so it's horizontal, and cut it nine and three quarters, and six and a half. So all three of the pieces you made from that strip will be filed in seven and eight. The next strip is three and a half inches. We are gonna cut this horizontally at 11 and a half, eight, and four and a half. So that gives us three pieces plus this little guy is gonna be a scrap. So we'll set that aside and put these all in pocket three and four. The next strip, this is gonna be a one and three quarter inch strip, will be filed into five and six. And if you're keeping things in order, the final two in the stack will be filed in three and four. All right, off to the dark green. We have, um, we're getting progress progressively more advanced in our trimming. Um, if you are like trying to follow along with the written instructions as well, what I like to do is just put like a little bookmark, um, any kind of a scrap paper or whatever, just to kind of keep track of where you are so things don't run astray while you're while you're trimming. So this first cut here, I'm gonna move this over to the left side of my pile so I can see it. All right, our first cut, 11 inches. It's gonna create a one inch piece, right? And then 10, nine and a half, eight and a quarter, five and three quarters, and three inches. Phew, that's all the vertical cuts. Now leave them all lay. Rotate the first one in the stack that's right in your trimmer base, actually, and we'll cut it horizontally at nine and a half and four and three quarters. Okay, so these really long pieces, they should be the same. Let's put them both in pocket one and two. And then you have this little guy. We are going to trim this. Uh, we're going to cut it, let's see, horizontally at two and a quarter. So when you place it in your trimmer, it should be three inches for starters, and then we'll cut it two and a quarter. The piece in the base of your trimmer should be filed in pockets seven and eight. And then this little guy is a scrap. Picking up the very next piece, we'll cut that horizontally at 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, and two and three quarters.
You just made four squares. All these pieces should be the same size. And there will, again, be another little scrap. This is more scraps than I... Oops. These are more scraps than I normally have. Um, these will be filed in seven and eight. The very next piece, the widest one that remains, will be trimmed horizontally at 11 and 3 quarters, 9 and 3 quarters, 7 and 3 quarters, and 4 and 1 quarter. Okay, so this piece in the base of your trimmer right now that's 4 and a quarter, that goes in 1 and 2. The next one, 3 and 4. And the next two that are the same size, they're pretty little. Those both go in five and six. And my friends, I'm sorry to tell you, this is not used. Um, the very next strip in the stack, five and six. Then you have a really skinny strip. This corresponds with that little scrap of the fern print that we filed in seven and eight. Then the last two pieces that are the same size, one and two. Now it's time to move on to our uh, border strip cut aparts. So I'll grab my instructions for that. That gives me the distribution map. So here at the bottom, um, it shows the, the cut aparts and the numbers superimposed on them tell you where they get filed. So we'll begin, um, if you can see them, they're very, very faint this month. There's a registration mark there. It's very gray, very, very soft color. And you'll find it at the bottom as well. Um, let's go ahead and line that up with the outer edge of your trimmer blade. And that puts us at about 11 inches. So if you're looking at numbers, just like before, we'll let those pieces pile up. Ten and a quarter. Nine and a half. Again, just use those registration marks, but we're at about seven and three quarters. And around a six. And finally, three and a half here. Now, there is a, actually a missing registration mark on this one. So I'm going to, let me just take a look here. What should be our measurement for trimming? Two and three quarters. Okay, so let's subtract that one, two. Let's cut this at nine and a quarter. And that's gonna give us this really cool piece used in layout five and six. And then the lift boldly will be in one and two. The remaining border strips, let's pick them all up. I like to do it, like if you have them all in the palm of your hand, it's much easier to file them. So take your time, seven and eight. This doesn't have any words on it, three and four. Here we have some ferns, five and six. The next two, um, and into the forest I go to lose my mind and find my soul. That's one and two, that sounds really good right about now. And then over the mountains, that's five and six. The next uh, piece, we're gonna take off the most narrow strip first. All right, that puts us, if I line up those registration marks, I'm at about 10 and 3 quarters. And just two more cuts. Be careful uh, not to cut here, because if you do, you'll cut through all that artwork. We'll get that on the back end there. And then one more. Same thing here. We've got to make a rotation. So let's do that. Rotate this piece. And be careful once again. We just want to trim off this large section. So this will be filed right away in pocket three and four. Remember to keep the forest is for rest attached to it. Now we have some additional pieces. I'm gonna place this in the trimmer so um, we came, we saw, we loved is on the right. So that I can just simply rotate and separate the two journaling prompts. Both of the prompts are used in layouts one and two. And the same is true for the, the mushrooms that came, saw, and loved. <laughs> Okay, now uh, this next piece, the most narrow one, will go on to the right, which says nature. No Wi-Fi, just a great connection. Amen to that. And this adorable squirrel, uh, seven and eight. And it's so funny. I just this morning saw the most unique squirrel I ever saw. It had a white tail. It was a gray squirrel with a white tail. Just this morning. Okay, um, here we have celebrate. That goes in three and four. I believe is seven and eight, and then nature, five and six. Just two more pieces to separate here. Get our little snail and our toad. Okay, so this mushroom journaling prompt, five and six. We have our little toad, three and four. The snail, seven and eight. 
And this last one we have to separate. And when I have small pieces like this, I usually just bring them to the midpoint of my trimmer so I can see better. Slow down, seven and eight. And also the little acorns, seven and eight. Finally, we've reached the last strip. Just trim the numbers apart. And this larger strip goes in one and two, and all four of the numbers get filed in seven and eight. So at this point, you can uh, dispose of your scraps. There's just a little tiny pile and swap out your trimmer. And um, be careful if you are using the accordion pocket file. Remember, your trimmer is the thing that holds it up. So just be aware of that. If you have an end of the table right there, don't take your trimmer away until you support your accordion pocket file. For this next step, if you turn to on the back page of your instructions, that's going to be page four on the very last page, um, you will see layouts seven and eight. That's where we're going to start with the dry fit process of our assembly. So um, I like to work in double page spreads, and I'm going to try this on the video, even though the, the angle is not as wide as I like. But take everything that you have left in your pile and put it on the left side of a two page spread and then slide the brown to your right. So now I have a left, this is layout seven, this is layout eight. That way when I go to my accordion pocket file, I can slide out all of the pieces for layouts seven and eight, and those will be the elements that will end up on this page. I think I had a little dark green fall out of this other pocket here. <laughs> I think I'm good now. All right, so what I what I will do then is just consult the instructions um, image. And um, also of note, I blog about the, the layouts as well. And if you're having trouble identifying something in the image here and you're in printout or the, the electronic copy of the instructions, you may have better luck by looking at the blog as well. I just try to support you as much as I can with the secrets to all the assembly. So I'll start with some border strips here. And this is at the bottom of this page eight is where the four dark green um, squares will end up living. And, well, maybe I did put that one in the wrong place. We'll find it. Never worry. Then um, I've got some nested mats here on the right. So right along the top edge, one of these dark green mats will live. And it should be positioned just to, so it's just enough room for everything to sort of fit with all this really nice equal spacing. And then one of the light green will nest on top. Then for the next one, I brought it down a little bit. Very good. And then I have a little snail. That one's going to get a little mat uh, with it. Let's move over to the left side. I like to get my border strips in line first. I really hope this double page spread thing works. And then let's take another nested pairing here. Now I was able to build sort of a clever little collage of pieces. Oh, there's another. There's the nest for the snail. And here's the other square for down over here. This larger brown piece that remains will nest perfectly with our squirrel. And then there's another larger piece that can be used for a photo. And I'm missing a little brown piece for that. The slowdown goes by the snail. This guy goes above here. And then the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So for that, I made um, just something to staple to them to kind of add a little life to the party. Let me show you how I did that. So here I have some of this gorgeous gold ribbon and I'll nest it with some of the really pretty green that I have. And this is angling this way, you can see. So I will angle the opposite direction on the other side and cut that with the fabric scissors and then just simply fold it in half. So it's a double thickness of ribbon, and then I'll just place that to the right edge of this number one here and staple it. I have a mini stapler, works great. If you want, you could cut this a little shorter. I think it might have gone a little too long with it. That's okay. I love this metallic ribbon so much. And then I attach these with some foam adhesive circles from Club Scraps. You can just put one of those on there. I guess be aware of it because it's going to overlap a little bit into this area, so make sure you put the adhesive toward the top so you can still slide the photo in from beneath. Well, how about we take a look at these finished pages, shall we? Here's all four with numbers with the staples. And then over on this side, I did add the same thing as well to the left of this 
element. And somewhere around here, there is a brown rectangle. I'm going to check in my, it's not in there. And that's the nice part about doing the dry fit is there is a missing piece that I will find eventually and I'll know right where it goes. Okay, so what you do now with this, this um, method is take layout number seven and slide it over on top of eight and then take the very next piece, slide it to the right. And now I have the foundation for, for building layouts five and six. So I'll look in um, on this image to find out where all the pieces will, will land and I will empty the contents of pocket five and six. Maybe if I just hang on to it and I can deal it out. Down in the lower right corner, um, I have a large brown strip along with the sentiment. And the, you'll notice the strip is way bigger than the sentiment. Um, that's because I have room for a double mat. So the green will go on top here. And I still have room to stretch a nice piece of raffia across that I will tie some bows onto. So I'll just cut a piece of that to allocate it for the bottom of this page. Um, horizontally, then above this border strip, I will place two horizontal light green mats. They'll fit just right. And then to the right of that, I can add some mini mats. And I still have room then for my drawstring muslin bag. I just couldn't believe my luck in finding this gorgeous bag with the ferns printed right on it. Yours will probably be a different portion of the fabric. They're not all the same. And then um, Jacqueline designed this, this little journaling prompt to fit perfectly into the bag. And what I ended up doing was I just always keep uh, like a my corner punch handy. If you want, it looks really sweet to just round the corners and that can slide right in there. Notice the bag is a little bigger, but that way you can just draw string it. And then what I did to handle this, the string is just crisscrossed the string itself so that it stays. So that's going to live there. And I did stick some greenery behind that. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Now on the left side here, um, this is where we have that nesting area of the fern print. So the fern lines up. Hope you can see this across the top. And then you have the three ivory pieces also cut from the fern, but I cut them so they would nest perfectly onto the first row there. Very nice. Use your grid ruler to help center and align those three elements. You can never go wrong with that. I like to have things nice and straight. And then here is a nice strip to separate these two areas. Here's where the photo mat will live. Ah, there, there it is. So now I can go and replace my misfiled piece onto the previous layout. And that's exactly how this is supposed to work. There we go. Nature, that goes below here. And all we have left then is this really large element. It's designed to work with a jumbo tag. Uh, what I did was used a craft knife and a ruler to cut the V into this piece. And then I also in turn cut the V into the jumbo tag as well. Once that's done, you can actually wrap this around to the back, punch a hole so you can add some ribbon. So let's take a look at how that finished layout turned out so you know how I worked that. Here's the right side of the page. You'll notice that um, I have attached three little bows essentially onto the existing strip and this has just been taped to the back of the layout. I guess I taped it to the back of the border strip first. So you can't even see those ends and then I just tied on three little bows. On this side, you can see that this has been, um, it's not even really glued on or anything, but I've made my tag and the cut apart, both have that chevron in the base, punched a hole to accommodate this beautiful green twill ribbon. Check this out. This is our beautiful white pigment ink combined with the stencil in this collection to add a little bit of a decorative element to the remaining exposed areas of that dark green base paper. So, so pretty. Okay, so the, the next step would be to slide. You'll do all that stenciling and stuff during that final phase of assembly. Let's slide this on over and we're flipping to the page three of our instructions, layouts three and four, and then let's grab pocket three and four. Okay, so now this is pretty easy. We have our large element here and then a larger border strip along over on the left edge. Then this is fun. We have this border strip there covering the toad for now. And then I'll place these photo mats here. Then I have a series. I have two squares 
And then I have this cut apart and a square that balances it out. So all four of these pieces end up fitting together just like a puzzle. On the left, we'll add the burp and tie a little uh, raffia bow around him. And this will tuck right beneath that photo mat. You're probably wondering how in the world did I get that toad to be in front of the border strip. And I want to show you how I did that. Now I've brought in my cutting mat. I've got a pencil and a craft knife. And you sort of just need to know where everything is going to live on the layout. So this is the general place where I want the strip, the paper strip to be. So I'll come in with my pencil and I'm going to mark right on the edge of the toad where the pencil, or I'm sorry, where the paper meets the edge of the toad. And I'll do the same thing at the bottom right here and then right here. Then remove the border, exchange your pencil for a craft knife. So here I've got the toad and there's my pencil line. So I'm just going to go right along his cheek there and down his shoulder. And it doesn't have to be real, real perfect at all. And I go a little bit past that pencil mark because I want to make sure I can thread the paper through that area easily. And if I'm too close, it can make it a little challenging. Then I'll go down along the right side as well. And there's the other pencil mark, just went slightly past it. Very good. Now I'll just erase. You want to make sure you're using a good quality eraser that's not going to cause smearing. I usually keep a nice artist eraser on hand. Now what I did do for this step is this gorgeous gold uh, pearl ribbon is in the kit. So I'm just going to take a length of this that's just slightly longer than the strip itself and I will tape it right to the center of this piece so that when I thread it in it's going to be ready. Now if you don't know this a ribbon does have a grain so I always just like check to see what it does on the tail ends. If I have it this way the tail wants to spin inward. It, wa it really wants to go this way. This way I would be working against the ribbon's natural direction. So I just want to make sure when I wrap ribbon around something, I wrap it with the grain. If that's a new tip for some of you, yay. Um, your ribbon and bow tying will be much easier from now on. <laughs> okay, so let's just get this wrapped around here. Make sure you don't pull too tight. It can lay flat easily. Then slide the whole works behind the toad through the slot that you made. You can remove all of this other stuff so you can just pick up the piece, turn it over, and I will continue by threading this through on the other side. And I do this a lot. You know, when there's a really cool element on the printed paper, I'll use that as an inspiration um, when I'm working with my layouts. That's what dictated this whole thing is the positioning of this cute little toad. <laughs> the fact that I had a border strip for this page. <laughs> Isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen? <sighs> okay, then I can replace the pieces and when I'm ready, they'll be set to, to adhere to the page. And that is just adorable. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to remove my cutting mat and replace my entire stack of layouts behind it so that everything's back in order again. Here's my left side. And that, my friends, is layout three and four. So now we have to slide just that one and then the next one. And that leaves us with two medium green planes as our base. And then I'll take everything out of pocket one and two. Okay, there's some exciting stuff that happens with this. I can't wait to show you. Down over at the bottom here, we'll just be flush with the edge. And then I'm going to add a nested strip just above it. So right on the edge is that narrow one and a half inch strip. And then the second half of this, whoop, <laughs> this quote over here. I usually just try to start with the border strip. So then up here on the left, we've got the corresponding fern print and then the corresponding quote. So this is an into the forest I go to lose my mind and find my soul is part A and part B of that. Um, then we have some nested mats. So I will start with the ivory and then nest with the four by six light green. This should fit in here perfectly and it does. 
Love it when a project comes together. Then we have the companion journaling prompts here on the lower left. I did staples, uh, some folded uh, dark green twill. And then this piece should have a mat, and it does, and it fits. Life is good. And then above here we have two vertical green mats. And then we have this tag. It's the other jumbo tag. And you'll notice that in the image the tag looks very exciting and colorful, and in reality it's not. <laughs> so but with the help of our stencil we can make that tag quite gorgeous. So I'm going to conclude this assembly information with some stenciling techniques um, that will help you make a beautiful adorned jumbo stencil. So here's the stencil itself, here's our jumbo tag rather. Um, and then you can use any number of different types of ink applicators and I've got my club scrap ink colors here. Um, I usually begin with the lightest color first and I'm using the leaf color and I'll just take my ink applicator and load it. The first application is what really, you know, is kind of critical. And I'll just test. Yes, I got a nice loading of ink there. So the key here, too, to make it look really nice is to make sure that this, the ferns make their way off the edge of the stencil. It allows the eye to continue the artwork and make it look even more uh, impressive. Okay, so I've just added. I mean, that was not difficult, right? I added some ferns over to that side. And... If you're concerned about leaving uh, marks from the edge of your reinker, just land on the stencil itself and then slide your way in. You don't have to apply a super dark layer of ink either. You can you can go real light and real gentle, soft with it. And then I also t tend to try to rotate if possible. So here's just a light application. It's still very, very lovely. So I have three stencils, uh, stenciled images of the fern here. I'm gonna put the lid on that and move on to the, hmm, this is spruce. This is gonna be a nice dark color. So maybe I'll do that last and I'll switch now to the earth. This, this is a very, very, very well-loved pad. So I'm not real super concerned about contamination of ink colors. And I'm gonna go real light on this. Just kind of fill in. That's pretty. And you can overlap if you want to. I just like to have things coming at different angles whenever possible. And then this is actually one of my favorite Club Scrap ink colors is this beautiful spruce. And I'm gonna be a little bit more bold with this. The ink itself is more bold too. Mm -mm -mm. Still using the same ink applicator. Oh, that is so pretty. So the final step to this is simply to add some of the twill ribbon, just add ribbon to the tag, tie the bow on top. And I will show you the finished um, layouts here. In fact, I don't think I showed you the previous layouts with our toad. Um, and here we have the other layout where I've added the little um, snail. He's so cute. I just think he's adorable. And this was added with attached with our bookbinding glue and he's there to stay. So here we go. Here's the magic of that beautiful tag. Um, you can see I added a die cut um, element here just trimmed from the um, dark green paper in this set. In fact, it's not this one, but we have this sheet or this uh, set of eight dies available. Um, and we've never done this before, but I found these and thought they would be wonderful, a wonderful pairing with this collection. So you can go ahead and um, get this as an add-on with your kit if it hasn't shipped already or just find it online on our website. Um, it's, it's just called the Forest Floor Cutting Dies, I believe, um, or die set. And it's just eight complementary ferns that will look really nice with this. I wish this had been from this set, but Ah, oh, hindsight is 2020. Anyway, you can see the stencil tag here in the background, and then this piece is designed to fit right into that space. And then we have our final page one here. And here you can see that adorable uh, bronze mushroom charm added, again, with bookbinding glue, and it stays there just beautifully. After I'd finished assembling and scanning and photographing all the layouts, I realized I had forgotten to utilize the most darling little 
acorn charm. So you're gonna have to decide where you put him, but these are the, the three super cute um, bronze charms that we found as great companions for this forest floor collection. I hope this kit inspires you to not only a scrapbook your outdoor pictures, but also to get outside and have some fun this summer and early fall. I know these pages will be wonderful for scrapbooking anything that happens outside. So get out there and have some fun. And um, join me also for the awesome forest floor card kit tutorial. I'd love to see you there. Thanks for joining me.